this is what transparency looks like in Germany. <laughs> As part of an investigation into the Volkswagen scandal, we wanted to know what the government did to regulate diesel emissions in 2012. And so we asked the Ministry for Economics and Energy, and what we got back is, among other things, this. Observe that the administration appears to have digitally blacked out a scan page, printed it out, scanned it again before they were sure they could release it to us. <laughs> I find it pretty absurd that information the government collects on behalf of the citizens is not available to the citizens. In fact, I can't really think of a good reason why all these documents shouldn't be made publicly available so that anyone can access the information they need. Many countries nowadays have these freedom of information laws by which citizens, journalists, and companies can request information from the government. So, say you want to know what Angela Merkel received as gifts from foreign officials last year. Well, you can send a request to the government, and if the government has that information, you have a right to know it, given that doing so doesn't violate other laws, such as the right to privacy or copyright. One could describe this as the pole model of information disclosure. That is, you want to know something, you request it, and maybe you'll get it. But why not go one step further? Why not have a push model of information disclosure? Why not open up data by default rather than by request? The government has so many awesome data sets. I'm thinking of environmental data, data on pollution, um, the weather, or transport data, data on traffic accidents, uh, subway time schedules, or just whatever patents were registered last year. All this information is not just interesting, but in fact relevant and useful for everybody. Making these data sets publicly available is a central idea behind open data. Data is open when it is free for anyone, anywhere, to use for any purpose. Again, given the right kinds of legal restrictions, such as privacy. For governments, this translates into data is online and published under an open license. Now, this vision may sound very, very fanciful to you but we've actually made some great progress in the last couple of years. 17 nations have signed the Open Data Charter, which commits them to releasing comprehensive, timely, and accurate data. Sure, that's by far not all, but we're getting there. There's a lot of green on this map for openness. But as more and more data gets added to portals around the world, there's one thing, one little thing that is so often overlooked in this process. Access to data alone is not enough. We need to make the data accessible. We need to turn data into knowledge. We need to make a cake from the raw ingredients, so to say. Well, what do I mean by that? Accessibility is very different from access. Data is accessible when it is understandable, when it is meaningful and useful, when it can be used to empower people and affect change in this world. To understand the difference, let's apply a concept from political theory here. In a capitalist society, I am free to buy a car. In fact, I am free to buy a Porsche. That is, nobody's prohibiting me from buying a Porsche. But, of course, I am also not free to buy a Porsche. I have to have the ability, in this case, the money, to do so. You have to distinguish between the right to do something and the ability to do something. And so here's what I think it means for openness. Open data describes a state where government data is published online under an open license. This is what activists have been focused on um, for a long time now. Accessibility, on the other hand, means that people in fact access 
make use of the data that is published. Already now, we have a wealth of information available to us. But it is an entirely different question to ask how many people have actually gained access to it. I don't know who here has actually been to the open data portal of Germany, govdata.de, but yes, there is one. And people don't go there because they don't know what to do with it. Freedom for the sake of freedom makes very little sense to me. Because surely, the reason I want to be free to buy a Porsche is to buy a Porsche. <laughs> Having the right to do so won't help me here. And similarly, for openness, accessibility, access to data alone is not enough unless I know what to do with it. We demand open data so that we can make use of it. It has to inform us. It has to enable us to make better decisions. So I propose the following. Opening up data is the bare minimum of what governments should do. The real work has to go into providing accessibility. And now to the $1 million question. How do you close this gap between access and accessibility? Well, first and foremost, the government has to remove barriers to the information they provide, be it technical, legal, or administrative. Life is too short to be scraping PDFs all day. We need to have machine-readable data. And also, nobody should have to submit personal information just to submit a Freedom of Information request. The government doesn't have to have my name on file just because I wanted to know what happened during the Volkswagen scandal. But more than that, we need better interfaces to search and retrieve information provided by the government. Interfaces that are designed for a diverse society with diverse needs. What we need is human-centered design. And what we don't need is bureaucracy, jargon, or broken links. But I think the onus also isn't just on the government. It is also our duty as technologists to raise awareness of open data, to promote data literacy, to build capacity for the effective use of data. We need projects that explain the data and demonstrate their value. Projects like this visualization of ancillary revenue in the German parliament, where you can compare the additional income of German politicians. Super quick to code, and yet very important to have. Or this beautiful presentation of traffic data commissioned by the city of Washington. You can see analyses for congestion, commuting, bus reliability, all on an interface that really invites you to explore the data and think about the city's infrastructure. These are fairly complex data sets, but the visualization really lowers the threshold for citizens to engage with the city. And sometimes you need whole global investigative teams to dive into the data and to, for example, unveil corruption, as was the case with the Panama Papers. We need data journalists who tell the stories behind the data, designers that convey the meaning of facts and figures, and whole communities of hackers and makers who build tools and resources to empower people. As a society, we need to see the value in publishing, analyzing, and interpreting data. And we need to do more of that in the open and for the benefit of all. Yes, access to data is very important for transparency, for accountability. But let's not forget that access alone does very little. We need accessibility. We need open knowledge. Thank you. <laughs>